What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going down? What's shaking? Welcome to another episode of Super Black Comic Book Reviews by Jonathan Soul. Now, obviously, this is a comic book. This is a children's book. It's a great one. And I wanted to bring it before the Jonathan Soul family. How you guys doing? Welcome to 2021 for people just uh, just watching this. This is uh, Becoming Ali, a novel by James Patterson and Kwame uh, Alexander. It's written in poetry and prose. It's talking about uh, Muhammad Ali's, or back then, uh, Cassius Clay, his early years. You know, from, you know, little one, uh, you know, fighting amateurs, going up into the, uh, into the uh, Golden Glo uh, Golden Gloves. I keep wanting to say Golden Globe, but Golden Gloves. Um, you know, when he, uh, you know, the bike that he loved got stolen. The whole bit. So he's going through all of that kind of stuff, introduces you to his, you know, some of his family, you know, this is a picture of his father uh, right here who was a sign painter. And uh, back in the day, billboards used to be hand painted. And um, his father did that. And uh, his father was uh, uh, Cassius uh, Marcellus Clay Sr., but everybody called him Cash. And moms, they called her Bird, you know. So uh, I thought that was kind of nice. So anyway, so yeah, so you just kind of go through the book. It's kind of told from uh, Muhammad Ali's perspective. And, uh, oh, my goodness, I let, off, I let off, I let off, I left off one important point. You see this gorgeous illustration right here? From Daoud Anyebwile, right? You should really put his brother's name on the cover for real, for real. Uh, it says it right here. We know him from Brother Man. So if you look at the style here, you can definitely see, um, you know, you definitely see the resemblance or whatever. And this is another great book for you kids. Now, not toddlers, because I don't know if you want to see him, you know what I mean, a brother fighting somebody with Switchblade. <laughs> but definitely, I guess, uh, I guess maybe fifth grade on up. Not kindergarten, but elementary school, I think it's fun. Um, but anyway, he's the illustrator. So the book kind of goes through, um, you know, his conversations uh, with himself, his his uh, buddy uh, Lucis, but everybody calls him Lucky, and uh, the poetry uh, that's in here kind of moves the story along, and then the prose and so on. So it's a nice book. It's a nice concept, and it makes sense because one thing we know about Muhammad Ali, he was an eminent poet. He was a premier poet. One of the poems that I heard him uh, say, he was lecturing at some fancy white university. Uh, it might have been Yale or Harvard or whatever. But the poem was, I, we. And the way he said it, he just, he put so much in it. It was like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> that was just so profound. So, yeah, he definitely... Is a, is is a, is a poet. So this is this is and just so we know, this is legit. It says right here, heavy hitters uh, James Patterson, Kwame Alexander join forces to vividly depict Ali's childhood in unforgettable prose and verse, uh, fully authorized by and written in cooperation with the Muhammad Ali estate, the biological. Uh, this biological uh, novel captures the force and charisma of one of the greatest sports heroes of all time. So this is book. This book is legit. So yeah, I definitely would add it to to your collection. Obviously, it's, it's going to be plenty of um, you know, uh, plenty of time for you to uh, spend with the kid. These are opportunities to create lap time. And when I say lap time, that just means that you and the kid are sitting down. There's no Nintendos, there's no PlayStations, there's no television. It's just you and a kid sitting down, spending time together. You reading to them, they reading to you if they can read. Um, and, and you guys spending quality time together. So as a parent, I have, you know, three children, uh, which are, you know, grown now. But one thing that I realized, and this is no revelation, but when you sit down and give somebody your attention, you are communicating that they're important to you. As parents, a lot of times, you know, we breaking our backs trying to make a living and, and take care of the kid. And um, 
because we're trying to squeeze so much into, you know, 18 hours that we're awake or whatever, we hope that the provision communicates the love and affection we feel for the kid. But it doesn't all the time. You know, you used to hear, they talk about men used to say, you know, do you love me? I put, I put food on your back and roof over your head. You know, that kind of thing. But that's not the same as a hug. It's not the same as a kiss on the forehead. It's not the same as holding their hands when they're little. Instead of them walking 10 feet behind you, you know, in the mall or something. It's not the same as you sitting down with them and, and reading a book. You know, and, and going off on tangents and telling them stories that this that the book may, uh, you know, bring them on. There's no substitute for that. You know, a long time ago, um, my son, he was uh, out of the country. And, um, you know, my mom, you know, misses him, of course. And so he called on FaceTime. And, uh, you know, a little iPad that I had is a small joint around here someplace. And uh, so anyway, he's on FaceTime and I brought the, lap, the, the, the iPad over to mom. And uh, we were talking and everything. And then <clears throat> there was one moment where she kind of reached out and touched his face. It was an unconscious movement. And I just kind of watched her fascinated, you know, because my mom is, you know, older. And um, and so I guess it's not like she... It There's something about humans where we need that interaction with the people that we care about. I, you know, of course... You know, if you're under quarantine, sometimes you can get too much of that. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Ah! You know what I mean? But uh, but generally speaking, when it comes to children, um, they need that quiet time when they can spend with mom and dad and just talk. Or you listen. And that's probably more important. Let them talk and you listen. Because that's another way you communicate that you're important. When you stop talking, we know we got 20, 30, 40 years of wisdom we want to share, but I'm learning even at my age that the more I listen to my kids, I think the more they're able to listen to me kind of a thing. So, uh, you know, sitting down and listening with the kids or whatever, and, um, and then they can, you know, they can kind of receive what you're putting down. So anyway, without going into a long uh, rant and stuff, I just want you to uh, pick up this book from Amazon. And uh, it's a great book, and you can read it to your kids. All right. And uh, if you're a teacher, I think this is a terrific book to have in the um, in your school library or, or, or bookstore, however you guys do nowadays. Um, there's no substitute. Uh, with African-American people in particular, I can't speak for no other group. If you give a damn about your children, your, your students, they're African-American, they got to see pictures of themselves created by us. Because when somebody else does it, they always fuck it up. Always. They don't do it on purpose sometimes. Sometimes they do. But they fuck it up. And so if you really care about the kids, you got to get them black created comics. I ain't talking about Black Panther or something like that. Where they can fly in space, but they're still slinging spears. I'm talking about books by about black people by black people, and uh, you'll you'll definitely help the the little baby's uh, esteem. All right, love you guys. So far, dreams come true. John the Soul, John the Soul .com. You can go over there and uh, check out my reviews of other comics. And now I'm going to start adding in children's books, and um, and then my interviews with the uh, with some of the creators. And uh, just be safe out there, family. Wear your, your blankety-blank mask. Wash your hands. Don't let a real estate developer give you medical advice. You know, it's so funny. 10, 20 years ago, somebody would have said, Hey, uh, you know that guy from the Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? Yeah. Well, he says it's okay to eat spoiled meat. People would have said, Man, shut the, shut, the, shut the hell up. I ain't listening to no TV, you know, TV show host about medical stuff. Fast forward. <laughs> Fast forward. 
So yeah, family, you know what I mean? Health isn't politics. The the germ don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, independent, or don't vote at all. Wash your hands. Uh, what I do, I go to and get these joints and I put them in these joints and after I wash my hands, I spray just in case one of them guys escape. You know what I mean? One of them, just in case one of the germs got a raincoat, I hit him with that, wash my hands, and I wash my phone and watch, you know, spray it on. Don't, don't spray your phone with the shit or, or whatever. It's a keyboard. You know, just make sure you're safe. All right? All right. Love you guys. Hope your dreams come true. Peace.